Starry? Is this Starry? It's Mrs. Leahy. Oh, hello, Mrs. Leahy. I thought you were going to be here for the library, Monster. The children are here and they're waiting for you. Oh, the children! I forgot all about the library monster case! Starry, they were really looking forward to seeing you. Oh yes, you see, I'm on an important investigation right now and I can't just leave. Oh, please tell the children I will definitely be there the next time. I do want to find out how the library monster case turns out. All right then. I guess I'll see you soon. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, bye. Toodles. Cheerio. Yes, toodles. All right. Bye. Bye. I'm sorry, boys and girls. I guess it's just you and me and the library monster. On to the next few chapters. Chapter 6. Stay. I sniffed the crack under the door. I smell dirt, dust, mold. What's in that room? It doesn't smell like stuff you normally smell around a school. Maya! I scratch at the door. Come back. Let me in. I don't think she can hear me. I sniff some more. Now I smell spiders, mice, old books, paint. What are you doing in there? I ask. I wonder if she's supposed to be in there. Well, she had a key. She probably wouldn't have a key if she wasn't supposed to be in there. I press my ear against the door and listen. I hear banging. I also hear things moving around, big things, heavy things. Then I hear Maya cry out, Oh no, she says, no, 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 no. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. I scratch at the door again. Maya, what's wrong? I sure wish I could open this door. There's a voice behind me. What are you doing all the way down here, buddy? Mr. Poe asked. Does Mrs. Keene know you're running around loose? I don't know, I say. That's not important. What's important is Maya's in there. I think she could be in trouble. Mr. Poe grabs hold of my leash and moves me away from the door. Wait, I say, digging my paws into the floor. We have to help Maya. But the floor is slippery and Mr. Poe is strong. He pulls me across the floor, up the stairs, around the corner, down the hall, all the way back to the office. Ellie raises her head when we walk in. She draws in her breath. I didn't know Buddy was loose. Did you, Sarah? No, I hear Mom before I see her. She comes out to Ellie's office and takes my leash from Mr. Poe. Thanks for finding him. He's usually much better about staying on his pillow. She looks at me like I am a bad dog. No problem, Mr. Poe says. Now, if only I could find that key to the furnace room as easily as I found your dog. I'll call the former principal of this school and see if she has any idea where it might be, Mom says, leaning against the door jam. If not, I'll call a locksmith to come and unlock that door. We've got to get in there and check the furnace pretty soon. Mr. Poe nods. Sounds good, he says. Then he leaves. Mom points to my pillow. Lie down, buddy, she says. I go and lie down. And stay this time, Mom says, returning to her desk. I stay even though I really, really, really want to know what Maya is up to. Is she in trouble? Does anyone know where she is? After 10 or 100 minutes, I hear footsteps in the hallway, running footsteps. 
Ellie gets up and goes out into the hall. No running, she says. The running footsteps become walking footsteps. A small voice says, sorry. Maya, I sit up. Down, Mom says. I lie back down. I'm pretty sure that was Maya's voice I heard. That means she's out of the secret room. That's good. But why would she run down the hall? Where is she going in such a hurry? I hear the door to the playground open and close. I can't quite see out Mom's window when I'm lying down. So I stretch my neck as high as I can and watch Maya zoom across the playground. She calls out to a group of boys who are playing football in the grass. Mom's window is closed, so I can't hear what she's saying. But I see a boy stop and turn toward Maya. He's a little older than she is. She motions for him to come over to her. It's too hard to see like this, so I sit up all the way. I watch Maya's hands move in big circles. Whatever she's telling him must be very important. Then they race towards the school. Buddy, Mom says. I drop to my belly. Stay, Mom says. Okay, okay, I say. There's nothing to see outside right now anyway. I hear an outside door open and close. It must be Maya and that boy. I wait, but they don't ever pass by the office. Are they really inside the school? I listen. I sniff. I don't hear or smell anything unusual. After 50, 11 minutes, Ellie says goodbye and leaves. Stay, Mom says to me again, even though I have not gotten up. Finally, after 70, 12 more minutes, Mom turns off her computer and reaches for her keys. We must be leaving soon. Okay, buddy, Mom says. That means I can get up. Mom picks up my leash turns out the lights in her office and the main office and locks the main office door behind us. As we move down the hall, I am sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. But I can't tell whether Maya and that boy are inside the school or not. Outside, I see my friend Jazzy snoozing in her backyard. Jazzy is a pug. She and I met at obedience school a long, long time ago when I helped her and our other friend Muffin get back to their real humans. Jazzy, I call. She raises her head. Buddy, hi. She scampers to the fence to greet me. Mom is not heading to the fence. She's heading towards the car. Did you see a girl that smells like strawberries and sugar? I asked Jazzy over my shoulder. That's the best way to describe Maya. The strawberries and sugar smell is much stronger than the monster smell. She was out here a little while ago. She was talking to a boy? Do you mean Maya? Yes, I saw her. She was talking to her brother, Alex, Jazzy says. I wag my tail. You know them? Mom opens the back door for me. Hop up, she says. I pretend I don't know what Mom wants me to do. Did you hear what Maya said to her brother? I ask Jazzy. Something about mice, Jazzy says. What about them? I ask. I don't know, Jazzy says. Did you hear them say anything else? Jazzy thinks for a minute. She also said Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy are gone. Who are Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy? I ask. I have no idea, Jazzy says. Chapter 7. Locked in. Let's go, buddy. Mom says, in the car. She pats the back seat. But I am in the middle of a very important conversation. Where are Maya and Alex now? I ask Jazzy. I don't know, she says. I saw them go in that door over there. She tips her head towards the far door at the end of the school. I don't think they ever came out. I have to find out what Maya and Alex are up to. I yank my leash out of Mom's grasp and I run for the door. Buddy, Mom stomps her foot, come back here. I keep running. Along the way, I pick up Maya's scent, her brother's scent, too. I can feel Mom chasing me across the playground. I know she isn't happy, but I have to follow Maya and Alex's trail. I follow it all the way to the school, 
Unfortunately, the door is closed. I don't know why all buildings can't have a doggy door like I have at my house. I peer in through the glass. Mr. Poe is mopping the floor. Let me in, I say, scratching at the slippery door. Please, let me in. Mr. Poe comes over and pushes the door open with his hip. Grab him, Mom yells at Mr. Poe. Grab Buddy. Mr. Poe reaches for me, but I leap away before he can grab me. I charge across the wet floor, sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. Uh Uh-oh, I think Mr. Poe has mopped away Maya and Alex's trail. No, wait. When I get to a part of the floor where Mr. Poe hasn't mopped yet, I pick up the trail again. I follow it down the hall, around the corner, around another corner, down the stairs, all the way to that secret door. I sniff the door. I don't hear voices or anything moving around inside, but I'm pretty sure I smell those kids in there. Buddy, sit, Mom yells as she hurries over towards me. Sit and stay, I sit. Good boy, Mom says, grabbing my leash. I pop back up and scratch at the door some more. Please, open this door, I say. Maya and Alex are in there. We have to find out what they're doing. What does Buddy want in the furnace room, Mom asks. This is the furnace room? I don't know, Mr. Poe says. He must smell something. I wish we could get in there. He tries the door, but it's locked. Hmm... Without a key, there isn't much we can do, Mom says. Come on, buddy, let's go home. (sighs) I think I have yet another new case. On the way home, I think about the case of Maya, the missing key, and the furnace room. Here's what I know about my new case. Maya and Alex were in the furnace room. Mr. Poe and Mom don't know where the key to the furnace room is. Maya had a key to the furnace room. I think Maya took the key. But why would she do that? There are more things that I don't know about this new case than there are things that I do know. Here is what I don't know. Why was Maya in the furnace room? Why does she have a key to the furnace room? Why did she say no, 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 no when she was in there? Who are Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy? Where did Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy go? What do mice have to do with anything? And why did Maya and her brother run back into the school? Oh, boy. Here's what I'm going to do to find out what I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I should go back to the case of the library monster or the case of the Four Lakes Elementary School ghost. But I don't have a plan for figuring out how to solve either of those cases either. (sighs) Sometimes being a detective is hard. The next morning, when Mom, Connor, and I arrive at school, I spy Alex on the playground. He's playing basketball with some other boys. I don't see Maya. Connor has hold of my leash because Mom is getting something out of the trunk. It's a big box, but not a very deep box. It doesn't smell very interesting. Can I go play basketball with those boys? I ask Mom as she slams the trunk. I think Buddy wants to play on the playground, Mom. Is that okay? Connor asks. Did Connor understand me? That's fine, Mom says, as long as you bring him to the office when the bell rings. Connor and I join the basketball game. I stick close to Alex. He smells like dog and rabbit and bacon and eggs. He does not smell like blue-tongued skink. If Maya has a blue-tongued skink for a pet, Alex must not spend much time with it. I follow Alex all around the basketball court. I sniff, I listen, I watch, but I don't learn anything that will help me solve any of my mysteries. The bell rings and all the kids run towards the school. Connor brings me to the office. I go on ahead of him and plop down on my pillow. I'm exhausted. Connor doesn't come in. Instead, he puts a gate across Mom's doorway. Hey, what are you doing? I charge towards the gate. It doesn't budge. I rest my chin on top of the gate and peer at Connor. Did you know you just locked Mom and me in her office?
Connor looks a little sorry. See you later, buddy, he says with a wave. I gaze over at Ellie. She makes sad eyes at me, then reaches into her treat jar and tosses me a beef treat. I catch it in my mouth. I love beef treats, but they don't make me feel any better about that gate. I'm sorry we had to put a gate up, buddy, Mom says, but we can't have you running around loose in the school. I only run around loose in the school when I have something important to do, I tell her. At least I'm only stuck behind that gate for 112 minutes. Then Mrs. Christie comes to get me. Oh boy, I say, hopping to my feet. Time to read. I wonder if Maya will read to me today, or Alex. As Mrs. Christie and I turn a corner, I pick up a trail. I smell blue tongue skink. He's still around, but where is he? I am sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. Darn, I lost the trail. This way, buddy, Miss Christie steers me into the library. I can't tell whether the blue tongue skink has been back to the library or not, and there's no time to explore because there's already a kid sitting on my pillow when I get there. He waves at me and Mrs. Christie. Hi, Noah, Mrs. Christie says as we settle in on the pillow. Noah smells like cereal and milk. I love cereal and milk. They're my favorite foods. Noah reads to me about things that go up and down. Then I play dead for him, and he goes back to his class. The next kid reads about a boy named Henry, a dog named Mudged, and a very dirty cat. The parts about the cat are boring, but I like Mudge. He reminds me of my friend Mouse. Another kid reads to me about snakes, and the kid after that reads to me about lizards. Just when I think I'm not going to see Maya today, or ever again, she strolls into the library. I wag my tail. Hi, Maya, I say. Are you going to read to me? Hi, buddy, she says. She's smiling with her mouth, but not her eyes. Look what I brought. Maya shows me the same book she brought last time, the one with the blue tongue skink on the cover. I note that she doesn't smell very much like a blue tongue skink today. She sits down on the pillow next to me and Mrs. Christie and starts to read. I have a hard time keeping my mind on Maya's book because Maya smells worried. Worried or scared, it's hard to tell. What's the matter, Maya? I ask. Why are you worried? Why are you scared? She keeps reading. Does it have something to do with the furnace room? I ask. Maya turns a page, rubs my back, and keeps on reading. Who are Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy? Did you ever find them? I ask. Maya doesn't answer any of my questions. When she finishes reading, Mrs. Warner says, You're the last reader this morning, Maya. Would you like to take Buddy back to the office? Okay, Maya says. Maya doesn't answer my questions when we're alone in the hallway either. She just pets me and tells me what a good dog I am. Mom opens the gate and lets me into her office. Thanks, Maya, she says, closing the gate behind me. You're welcome, Maya replies. Then something very strange happens. Mom goes back to her desk and Maya tiptoes over to that board with all the keys. She peers over her shoulder, hangs a key on the empty hook, and scurries towards the door. Chapter 8. What did Maya do? Ellie wanders into the office as Maya is trying to leave. The two nearly run into each other in the doorway. Excuse me, dear, Ellie says as she scoots around Maya. She stops in front of the gate. Have you called the locksmith about the furnace room lock yet? She asks Mom. No, I forgot. I'll do that right now, Mom says. She reaches for the phone. You don't have to call anyone, I tell Mom. The key is back. Shh, buddy, Mom says, putting her finger to her mouth. I'm on the phone. I lie down on my pillow and listen as she makes plans for someone to come and open the furnace room door and put in a new lock next Thursday. I sigh. <sighs> Nobody ever listens to the dog. Eleventy-seven minutes later, Mr. Paul strolls into the office. He stops in front of the board with the keys. Hey, you found the key to the furnace room, he says. No, Mom says, but I called the locksmith. They'll be out next week. The key's right here, Mr. Poe says, taking it off the hook. Really? Mom stands up. That's strange. Well, I'm glad it's back. Are you going to check the furnace today? I'll do it right now, Mr. Poe says. I go to the gate. 
Can I go with you? I ask, wagging my tail. I'd really like to see what's in that furnace room. Mr. Poe leaves without answering me. I guess that's a no. <sighs> the good thing about the gate in Mom's office is I don't have to be on a leash when I'm in her office. And I don't have to stay on my pillow. I can sit by the window and see what's happening on the playground. I like to watch the birds and the squirrels and the kids at recess. Hey, Maya and Alex are outside. They're not playing. They're talking quietly over by that tree. I wonder what they're talking about. Whatever it is, it looks serious. I think I'd like to go outside now. I let out a little woof, but Mom doesn't look up. I woof again, louder this time. Then I turn a circle in front of Mom's desk. That gets her attention. Do you need to go outside, buddy? She asks. Yes, 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 I say. The light above us flickers. Mom squints up at it and sighs. I guess that light still isn't fixed, she says. Then she clips my leash to my collar, moves the gate, and hurries me outside. Connor is outside, too. He's talking to some kids on the climbing toy across the playground, but he waves when he sees us. Connor, Mom says, will you bring Buddy to the office when recess is over? Okay, he says. He slides down the slide and runs towards us. Mom unhooks my leash and I am free. I give Connor a quick lick, then say, sorry, Connor, I can't play right now. I dash across the playground towards Maya and Alex. But Alex is backing away from Maya now. What do you think I should do? Maya cries. Alex shrugs. I don't know, he says. You should never have taken them in the first place. Taken what? This is your problem, not mine, Alex says. Then he heads off to join a group of kids playing football. Oh, Maya plops down on the grass and leans against a tree. She looks glum. I lie down beside her and rest my head on her knee. What's the matter, Maya? I ask. <sighs> Hi, buddy, Maya says. She pats my head. I did something I shouldn't have done. What? I ask. What did you do? <sighs> First, I stole the key from the office. Maya says. Then I took it to the hardware store and I made a copy of it. Then, oh, I can't even tell you what I did after that. She buries her face in her hands. The bell rings. Maya dries her eyes on her sleeve. Buddy, Connor calls. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Come here, boy. He pats his legs. I'll see you later, buddy, Maya says as she drags herself to her feet. What could she possibly have done that would make her feel so bad? Mr. Poe lumbers into the office right behind Connor and me. I hear you're still having some trouble with that light, Mr. Poe says. Connor leads me into Mom's office, then slides the gate across the doorway. I go lie on my pillow. Mom sighs. Yes, I don't know what the problem could be. The lights aren't flickering anywhere else in the school and you've already replaced the bulb. Could be a short in the wire. Or, Mr. Poe's eyes twinkle, maybe we have a ghost. Mom scowls. There is no such thing as ghosts, Mr. Poe, she says. Are you sure about that? Mr. Poe asks. Please just fix the light, Mom says. Hmm, I've been worrying so much about the blue tongue skink and about Maya's problems that I completely forgot about the ghost. Was a ghost making Mom's light flicker? After school, Connor goes over to Mouse's house again. I'm glad he and Michael are getting to be such good friends, and I'm glad he lets me come along to play with Mouse, even if they go in the house and don't play with us. Have you caught the library monster yet? Mouse asks me. No, I say, but I found out what it is. It's a blue tongue skink, just like Cat said. How do you know? Mouse asks. I saw a picture of it in a book that a kid read to me, I say. But that's not the only thing going on at the school right now. I tell Mouse about Maya and Alex, and about them going into the furnace room, and what Jazzy overheard about mice, and about Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy being gone, and the fact that Maya did something she shouldn't have done. I also tell him about the flickering light in Mom's office. I keep finding new mysteries to solve before I can solve all the old mysteries. 
I drop to my belly and rest my chin on my paws. Maybe they aren't new mysteries, Mouse says. Maybe they're all part of the same mystery and you just have to find out how those mysteries fit together. I don't know, I say. What does the blue tongue skink have to do with the flickering light? Maybe nothing, Mouse says, but maybe something. And what does Maya sneaking into the furnace room have to do with the missing Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy, I ask. Maybe nothing, Mouse says but maybe something. It would help if I knew who Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy were, I say. Or what they were, Mouse puts in. What could they be? Humans? Animals? Aliens from outer space? Jazzy overheard Maya and Alex talking about baby mice. Maybe Felix, Freckles, and Fluffy are mice, I say. Maybe, Mouse says. Bob the reptile guy was missing some mice. Did Maya take them? Is that what she meant when she said she did something she shouldn't have done? Did she steal the mice? Did she hide them in the furnace room? Then I remember something Maya read in that book, something that makes my fur stand straight up. Blue tongue skinks eat mice, and there's a blue tongue skink in our school. Tune in next week for the exciting conclusion of the case of the library monster.